folks to another 816 32-bit video today as you can probably see in the background I'm going to be doing a little bit of a review of the iconically difficult video game for the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis if you're in North America Splatterhouse 2 now this game was produced by Namco in the early 1990s and was a sequel to their arcade and PC Engine hit Splatterhouse. Now, at the time, very few video games were as gruesome or gory as this and it certainly made an impact on my teenage self. I was a massive horror movie fan, uh, still am in fact, and this game leapt out of the shelves of my local video game store to me simply because of its cover art which looked sort of like a Friday the 13th film with zombies thrown in anyway as you can see from this wonderfully atmospheric intro sequence Namco used a very muted colour palette to create a dark dingy atmosphere as I mentioned a minute or so ago, this game is also notorious amongst gamers for being brutally difficult. And I mean brutally difficult. Each level comes with a password. Most game players will probably never get themselves beyond the second or third level without having to find passwords from somewhere else or even find cheat codes. Seriously, for a scrolling beat em up, this game maintains an arcade-like level of brutality. Some of the boss fights are almost impossible unless you have the correct weapon, and even the regular enemies can be so, so annoying with their attack patterns, it is almost unreal. Anyway, I'm going to let this intro play out now, and then momentarily, we shall go into some gameplay footage of myself attempting to play the game, over which I will give a little bit of commentary. Okay, so here we are playing the game. As you can see, game scrolls in, and here I go. Yep. Now... As I said earlier, this game is brutally difficult, however this opening sequence is almost comically easy compared to the rest of the game. The enemies telegraph when they're going to appear, and they're nice and easy to take out. Now, I personally think this game has a really beautiful look to it. The muted colour palette makes the gore stand out. You know, there's some lovely parallax going on in the background there to give it some depth. And the enemies, you know, you, you look at the enemies, they look suitably gruesome. We've got some sort of zombies here and some weird worm things. Um, like I said, though, it's, this bit is not too difficult. Um, the music is excellent. I really do love the music. There are two video game soundtracks that I keep on my phone at all times to listen to. One of them is Streets of Rage 2. The other one is this one. And as you heard then, possibly, you know, th there's a little bit of sampled speech in here. Anyway, that's your, your little intro section, which lulls you into a false sense of security and takes you into the first boss. A little bit of a cut scene almost here. Oh no, the zombie's scared. It's more scared of you. But anyway, here comes your first boss, a giant acid-spitting worm thing, which is should be easy to beat, but obviously I just died because I wasn't really paying attention. Well, let's give it another go here. As you can see, the, the animation is pretty simple and pretty basic on it, but it, it works. You know, there's a, there's a gruesomeness and a darkness to it that certainly is going to make any teenager playing the game feel you know, pretty cool. they go a little uh, static cutscene to show you into stage two. Ah, that old standard of the beat-em-up, the lift stage. For the second stage, it's usually a bit later on in most beat-em-up games. 
Now this is where the game starts to get tricky because the jump pans of these annoying screeching zombie demon things can be difficult to work out the positioning. Uh, I've got a feeling I'm going to die here any second and um, we'll end up having to restart this level. Yep, there we go, dead again. But again, it is, this is another level that looks nice. There's a nice little parallax effect going on with the back wall and the wall at the front to give it an illusion of some depth. As you can see, it's, it's reasonably smooth to play. It can feel a little sluggish and heavy when you're trying to turn and punch at the same time. But, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm playing this on... Um, 60 hertz models if I was playing on a Genesis when I had it in the UK originally it was obviously 50 hertz and much much slower which really does make a difference if anything it makes it slightly easier yet heavier to control if that makes any sense so your controls are heavier but because the game's slower it's easier to play now some nice little uh, graphical effects going on here just to give the game a bit of bit of depth and help with the atmosphere. And I'm dead again. There we go again. Yep, more of these annoying screaming bad guys, including some purple ones, which are twice as irritating. See a nice little background effect there with a an auto scroll background layer full of you know ghosts and weird stuff and bit of gore there on the floor with the flashing light and yeah collision detection is a little bit weird with some of the uh, enemies and obstacles but you know it's it's overall it's not a bad game I do love playing this game and I hope that one day I'll actually be able to complete it without cheating or such but I highly highly doubt that is ever going to happen because it's just it's beyond my skills as a gamer. It really is. So, in summation, it's a fun beat em up, but not the easiest. Definitely one for people who love a challenge, and it is quite expensive. I think it's it's going for about £30 in the UK at the moment, so if you want it, grab it now, because it's only going to get more expensive. So there you have it. Splatterhouse 2 for the Mega Drive and Genesis. If I was going to put a score on it, I'd give it a solid 7.5 out of 10. It would have probably been an 8 and an 8.5 had it not been so outrageously difficult. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please, please do like and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully I'll be seeing you again soon. Goodbye.